The big theme that, that sums up what's been going on in 2019 is a massive pivot globally with central banks. Um, they've gone dovish. We had out of the G10 uh, central banks, most of them in the end of 2018 were pricing hikes. Now most of them are pricing cuts. Only two of the Norwegian ones are pricing uh, cut hikes still. So it's definitely been a lot of, I would say, gasoline on the financial markets in terms of gasoline on the fire because that dovish pivot has taken all the concerns that were there. Mm. Remember how bad things felt in December mm. and how negative we sentiment sure was? <laughs> and the only thing that's really changed, the growth concerns that we had, the trade war concerns, Brexit, like all those things are still there. They still exist. But there's a nervous euphoria, I would say, nervous euphoria that's happening in the markets right now because people are all benchmarked. And the markets have rallied huge this year, all markets, whether it's credit, whether it's equities, and people are underperforming. And so there's chasing and there's, there's a fear of missing out, which is happening right now to create this nervous euphoria that's going on in markets. Yana? I think um, sentiment is a tricky thing, and I always uh, ask the question of how do you measure sentiment, right? One way that we look at the market, we look at just where the cash and where the flows are going, and they certainly haven't been going into public equities, particularly U.S. equities. The last four weeks, we've seen over a billion and a half, actually, of outflows. So while it's fair that things have shifted, I think the sentiment is one that, you know, depending on what data you use, you can come up with a lot of different answers. Wanted to find out what sentiment indicators you use. So at Quadratic, we focus on options and the options market. So I think the most insightful sentiment indicator is looking at options markets. Because if you think the majority of investors, they're looking at their cash portfolios, whether it's stocks or bonds or privates, whatever it is, it's a core portfolio. And the options will be around the periphery. The options are there for yield enhancement or the options are there for protection. And so the options are kind of where people go when they're nervous or when they're euphoric. And so I think looking at the options market, looking at skew, looking at the price of different option strikes, that's really where you can pick up the best insights, in my opinion, on sentiment. I'm sure, John, you probably agree. I do, I do, and I know you don't like the VIX per se. You might use it as an indicator of sorts, but you can't actively trade it. Um, and so you trade many of the other products around that, many of the other derivatives. Rich, look, yeah. it's clear in, in Q4 the market disconnected from fundamentals. And right now the market's moved back up and connected with fundamentals. Now the question is, how do you price a market where we have low inflation and a very accommodative Fed, as you said? So my view is that we're fairly valued to slightly overvalued, but unless we start to see better EPS and multiple expansion, the market won't make tremendous increases. Now, can we get a correction? Absolutely. I think one of the things you mentioned previously was the China deal. I think that's in the market right now. I think it's going to be a disappointment. So I don't think that's going to be a net positive. Fed cut, I don't see it on the table. I think a neutral Fed is actually a positive. There's no reason for the Fed to you do anything. You think the whole trade deal is in the market? I, I disagree. You don't see, if I, if I tell you right now, <clears throat> headline just crosses, got a deal, and it looks to be a pretty good deal. You don't think the market shoots up? It's got to be a very good deal. I think it's got to be a very good deal with uh, a lot of protections, a lot of increased purchases or exports to China, um, a lot of protections. I, th I think I the, alg the algorithm will trade on the headline, and the, the Muppets will trade on whatever the algorithm trades. And I think then the market will close, and the next day there will be something else, and everyone will forget Oh, it turns out we didn't make that much progress with China after all. That'll be a political story on CNN and Fox and MSNBC. We will not talk about it afterward. Nancy. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Scott. I think it's not priced in. I think people are not, it's not priced in for downside, I would say, is where I see it. Yeah. But the upside is not priced in. And I think also if you think about what, you know, goods and services, a really easy way to close that trade gap is actually on the service side. And that's what the U.S. is so good at, whether it's technology services, financial services. So I think it's not priced in on the upside. And I think <clears throat> services are really the ones that could potentially benefit. Nancy, talk to us a little bit about, I mean, everyone's blossomed in, and not you, but everyone's blossomed into a quant. You know, all, all, everyone's now, hedge funds have pivoted, no more <clears throat> fundamental analysis, now they're a quant. So everyone's basically looking at the same thing. Are we not in an environment, once again, where we're just chasing momentum? 
if everyone's looking at the same thing and the predominance of activity on a daily basis is driven by that quant model, doesn't it ultimately just become a chase of momentum and how far can that chase go before it has to, it's inertia, it has to come back down? Yeah, I think you bring up a great point that so many of the systematic models are following these, these factor variables and there's been such a huge push into these uh, kind of trendy names, like whether it's Minval Securities, like Minval Securities have nothing to do with volatility. They're just expensive stocks, in my opinion. And so you have kind of this group think happening in the market and people say they want diversity, but it's really all the same stuff. And I think the problem that we've had in 2018 is investors are flocking back into carry, universally carry. And carry can be uh, bonds, it can be private credit, it can be um, vol selling. All of those systematic models with their binders are, are, are squashing volatility, squashing uh, yields, and trying to pick up as much carry as they can. Um, and I see that as a problem.